We've utilized this water filtration system for over eight years now. It's simple, it's effective, and it lasts up to 40 years. What's going on everyone? I'm Brandon, and this is the Greening the Desert Project. We're here taking a look at our Biosand filter today. This is a filter that we've actually utilized for over eight years, and it's served us pretty well in filtering out all of our rainwater that we've collected over the years. So with this system and this setup, it's pretty similar to a lot of uh, sand filters that go with pool setups, in-ground pools and such like that. They also utilize it in wastewater treatment plants as well. But for our sake, we have our filter system for filtering our rainwater that we've been catching throughout the winter. As we get prepared and more set up, up top here for camping and getting everything situated so that we can continue the build on the Gabion Wallapini. So I put together our biosand filter here, which the simplicity of it is something that's super appealing to myself, not only in just the concept, but just the makeup of the design in general. So with it not using very many pieces, it makes it very simple to piece all of this together in and of itself. I only had to make a few holes in the buckets and you can see that this is a double bucket system and with most people set up sometimes it's it depends on the design not everyone has a double bucket some people utilize just a single bucket but for our case we've got our top bucket that has gravel for filtering out bigger debris large sticks and stuff like that and then we have our bottom bucket that is holding the sand and where our biological layer is going to be developing. So with it being simple to put together, the one disadvantage I'll say when piecing it together is having to wash the material. I'll say that that probably takes the longest amount of time through this whole process of building this is washing and kind of filtering out all of the clay particles and stuff from the sand and the gravel itself. And granted, we could have used all of the materials that we have on the land because we do have sand, we have gravel, and we have rocks. But I actually did utilize some gravel from the land. I actually bought two 50-pound bags of play sand, which is already somewhat cleaned, but there's still a cleaning process to it. There's still a lot that's in there when you actually go and wash it. And I think overall it took maybe almost 40 gallons of water to clean all of the gravel and all of the sand to make this complete. But that's what makes this system really simple is that it's just utilizing sand to help develop a biological layer. So we're utilizing biology just like we are in all of our other permaculture practices and with how we're doing the gardening and the food forests and such. The biology is the main player in filtering out the viruses, the pathogens, any organic material. And when we're looking at the biology that's developing on the sand layer, this actually takes not that much time. Generally upwards of three weeks is about the time frame it takes for the biological layer to develop this kind of uh, mucousy film that develops on the top couple centimeters of the sand that goes into the effectiveness of this sand filtration system. Studies have definitely proven that there's a 90 to 99% filtration rate with these sand filters once we get the biology established on the top layer. And like I said, we've lived with this for over eight years now. It's filtered thousands of gallons of rainwater for us. We've never gotten sick from drinking the water out of the sand filter. But that's where the effectiveness of this filter comes into a bigger play when we're only catching rainwater. There's a lot of these that are implemented in third world countries like Africa in rural communities where they're harvesting, you know, less than ideal water for filtering, very mucky, very muddy, but they're still able to filter out 90 to 99% of the bacteria, Giardia, all the nasty bacteria that we don't want, and that'll make us really sick. And that's where we're coupling with this filtration system with harvesting rainwater. So we're getting all of this set up in our outdoor kitchen area. And as we get set up at our campsite here, we've got our rainwater harvesting basin that we had dug and put the pond liner in, but we're gonna be utilizing that water 
filtering that water through our filtration system for drinking, for cooking, and for animals and such. It's with us getting ready for camping out up top here that we're getting the sand filter ready. As I said before, it takes the biology almost three weeks to become established and actually start filtering the water effectively. So this will actually give us the time to develop the biology in the bucket as we get everything prepared up top. We're still running into some wet weather and kind of colder weather, so we're still holding off on being up here a little bit more often and actually getting set up and camped out. And we're already up here on a daily basis, so it's not the end of the world to have to dump a bucket of water to keep the cycle going because what we're developing in the bucket is a diversity of aerobic bacteria in the bucket so they are requiring oxygen so that's kind of one of the disadvantages of the bucket system is that it does require constant attention essentially where we have to be filtering water on a daily basis to keep the biology oxygenated and keep it thriving in the bucket, but also to keep it effectively filtering the, the water as best as it can. Now we can't skip over the sand aspect because the biology is one part that needs the sand for one, to be able to develop and start filtering out the water, but it's also with the sand that it comes with a slight static charge to it. So it's kind of the advantage of having the sand and the biology because we're having the biology filter the water as well as the two feet of sand that we have inside of the bucket. So the sand, like I said, has a static charge. So anything that does pass through the biological layer, anything and everything is getting trapped in the small grains of sand. So everything's getting trapped in the sand where there's no light and there's no food as well as it's being attracted to the sand so everything essentially gets stuck in the sand and can't penetrate any farther down. This is where one of the disadvantages of this system comes into play because the maintenance that's required is keeping the biology going is one aspect so we're needing to keep the oxygen going but when things start slowing down with the filter when it's not filtering as much as it used to that means the filter is starting to get clogged up and it needs that maintenance. It is simple to maintain this system. And the simple maintenance that is required when the filter is clogged up or it's not filtering as adequately as it should, it really only requires scraping off the top layer, really the biological layer that's established on top of the sand. And that really only takes a short little swirl of water or scraping the top layer of sand off and hucking that into a garden bed or off to the side and reestablishing the biology. But I think with that disadvantage of the maintenance kind of comes the advantage of that we're not messing with any filters or anything that we have to buy or anything that's unique necessarily. All we really have to do is buy more sand or, uh, <laughs> or harvest more sand on the property. And with that, that kind of overall leads to the sustainability aspect of this system. Because we're using minimal inputs, we're using gravel, and we're using sand, and we're using water. The control of the water flow is somewhat important as well with the filtering because we don't want to be just shoving a whole bunch of water through this system all at once and having it gush out the end. Essentially with these filters, we want it a little more on the slow end, which kind of goes into that disadvantage of maybe it's a slower filtering system than what most people like or are used to. But for this system, we need to have a slower filtration rate so that the biology has a chance to do its job and the sand also has a chance to do its job. So how we're cultivating the biology in the bucket is we're having this filled with water, but where we have our outlet tube and then our inlet tube for the water, we actually have a spacing where the sand starts and then where the exit of the water comes out of the pipe. And that's super important that we have at least a few centimeters of water above the sand layer so that we have an area for the biology to start being cultivated and developing. And it's also important why 
the bucket with the sand has the screw on lid with a rubber seal to it so that we can keep this sealed because when this fills up as the water is getting filtered we also want to hold the water in this bucket to keep the gravity pushing the water through the sand and up through the tube and out the filter as well as keeping the water inside of this bottom bucket and not overflowing. So the biggest thing trying to figure out was trying to have the double bucket system with the having the top bucket and not having it glued or anything that would kind of interfere with the sand bucket. So the screw on lid makes it a perfect kind of bucket system. So with everything being so simple, it makes the longevity of this system way longer compared to regular filters, sediment filters, uh, reverse osmosis. And like I had said in the very beginning, this system has a 35 to 40 year lifespan to it. And that's really only accounting for the sand aspect. So if the, bu the buckets become brittle or anything, I mean, all these pieces are gonna have to be replaced over time if they crack or degrade or anything like that. As long as we have the maintenance on this whole system, Besides the plastic components, all of this stuff, the sand and the gravel and the biology is going to keep filtering and still producing consistent results for at least 35 to 40 years. That much more appealing for the fact that it is low cost, it's low maintenance. I think overall for all of the pieces, because I mainly just bought a lot of the PVC pipe pieces. I already had the buckets here actually, so I had to eliminate those from the cost. So it was about a hundred bucks for everything that I spent to create this design. There's a lot of different designs on YouTube, many different videos you can Google search. There's a lot of different companies that actually make these commercially that send these out to places like Africa and other third world countries as well. So there's a lot of different designs that people can make and get creative with. A special shout out to our Green Guardian members. We really appreciate your guys' help and your support in this Greening the Desert project. You can check out our Green Guardians membership page to find out the plans for this bio sand filter, along with how we're composting up here, observing nature, and behind the scenes footage on the build. It's actually really cool to watch this filter as we were cleaning the sand and finally got everything pieced together and watching it filter the water. So it can handle some pretty muddy water and we can see the difference as we're cleaning the sand and filtering it. We've got our IBC tote for holding 300 gallons of water. So now we'll be able to pump water from our catchment basin over to our tank where we can siphon water out of our tank to be able to filter in the bio sand filter. So this filter system just fits with our goals and our values. I mean, it's simple and it's effective. And for how we're gonna be camping and staying on the land up here while we're building, this is an essential piece for our survival here is one aspect, but also for cooking and cleaning as well as animals. It's getting pretty exciting setting up our camping area, getting our outdoor kitchen area set up as well. And in the meantime, we actually have been on the side working on the Gabion Wallapini. And a lot of the stuff that Nika has done 